request that you would like to share? Or maybe you have a question about the Bible. Here's an opportunity for you to share your request or get biblical answers. Stay tuned for a live call-in program entitled Prayer and Answers. Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Prayer and Answers. I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday and that it is well with your soul today. My name is Randy Smith, and every week I get the privilege of hosting this live radio call-in talk show uh, where we take your prayer requests, or perhaps you have a question on the Bible, maybe something that just you've always wondered about and we look at the scriptures together and see if we can find an answer to that question the reason we take prayer requests is because a lot of people have needs and the bible says that you have not because you ask not and the bible also tells us that we are to pray for one another so what we do here is folks call in with their prayer requests and we pray for right here on the air with them uh, and then uh, god answers and then we get to share about how God has answered and the body of Christ is encouraged and ministered to. So this is not a teaching program. It's not a, uh, we're not going to be uh, carrying the conversation our, ourselves. We, we are looking for the body of Christ, the larger body of Christ here in El Paso to participate and to assist me and uh, in our conversation and our prayers to be able to minister to those who are listening. So the phone number here is 915-779-0016. And if you'll uh, call and join the conversation, it will help me out greatly, particularly this week, because as I look to my left where my co-host, Dr. Steve Kovac, normally sits, it's empty. There's just an empty chair there. Steve uh, is struggling with a little bit of a cold, and he didn't want to give it to me. And so he stayed home this afternoon and hopefully he'll uh, he'll be able to uh, recover and be able to minister tomorrow at the church where he pastors and so we do ask for your prayers for Steve that he'll have a speedy recovery again the phone number here 915-779-0016 if you're uh, uh, new to the program we've been doing this I don't know how many years uh, for a long time and um and it is a little bit different. You're accustomed to some professional uh, coming on and, and speaking about God, and you're just a consumer. But here, it's more like a potluck, and everybody brings something to share. And so uh, uh, I would, it would uh, really help out a lot if you would bring something, a prayer request or a Bible question, 915-779-0016. One thing we haven't, I haven't, uh, heard from in a long time. It's been, I don't know how many months. We used to have some folks in Oklahoma that would listen in as well, and I haven't heard from them forever. I guess maybe they stopped listening. Um, and uh, But once in a while, a woman named Texi would call in from Oklahoma, and that was always an encouragement, knowing it wasn't just the El Paso area, but outside of the El Paso area that, um, that the Lord was ministering to. So uh, if you're Maybe if you're in Oklahoma, maybe it's your turn to call in and, and to uh, help us out. So I'm going to give the phone number here one more time, area code 915-779-0016. And then what I'm going to do is go to a break and give folks a chance to call in. And so go ahead, if you're driving, go ahead and pull over somewhere. And if you're not too busy, maybe it's time for you to take a coffee break and join together with the church here in El Paso and, and uh, let us minister to one another. So we'll be back in just a moment with more prayer and answers. This is Max Lakato. Jesus was at a wedding when Mary, his mother, came to him with a problem. They have no more wine, John chapter 2 and verse 3. Weddings lasted as long as seven days in first century Palestine. Food and wine were expected to last just as long. So Mary was concerned when she saw the servants scraping the bottom of the wine barrel. We're not told the reason for the shortage, but we are told how it was replenished. Mary presented the problem. Christ was reluctant. Mary deferred. Jesus reconsidered. He commanded. The servants obeyed. And the sommeliers sipped and said something about their squirreling away the best wine for the farewell toasts. 
Mary smiled at her son. Jesus raised a glass to his mother. And we are left with this message. Our diminishing supplies, no matter how insignificant, matter to heaven. This is Max Lucado. I know what you're going through. I've been there. Nobody else I know has been there. It's not easy being a veteran. Coming back from Iraq or Afghanistan. I had been so excited to come home. But it's harder than I thought. Not everyone understands that. Things at home may be as you left them. But you don't feel the same. Join us at communityofveterans.org and connect to others who are going through the same thing. Because no one knows what it's like to come back unless they were there. Brought to you by Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and the Ad Council. I was facing foreclosure and they guaranteed they would get my loan modified. I paid them a fee and never heard from them again. Anyone can be a victim of a loan modification scam, but you don't have to be. Know the signs. Get the facts. Visit www.loanscamalert.org. For trusted government-approved help and to report a scam, call 1-888-995-HOPE. That's 1-888-995-4673. Well, we are back with more prayer and answers. Uh, Kenny is over there in the, I say we, because Kenny's over there in the engineering room, ready to answer telephone calls. And I'm here in the studio at the microphone, uh, waiting uh, to answer telephone calls as well, and waiting to uh, pray with someone, or maybe open the scriptures together and see if we can find some answers. However, Kenny, it looks like uh, none of our listeners have any prayer requests today. So hallelujah for that. Uh, evidently, the Lord has taking care of everyone. There's no one with any lost family members or illnesses. And I'm just, I'm kind of thrilled about that. And there's no one with the question either, Kenny. It seems like um, everyone pretty much uh, has uh, a full understanding of, uh, of everything in the scriptures. And so this could end up being a really short show, Kenny. Um, maybe we're not needed anymore. Uh, so, um, uh, we'll we'll give it a couple of more minutes. It's uh, nine one five seven seven nine zero zero one six. But if there's if everyone's needs are met and there's no need for prayer, or m no need to give him thanks, maybe we've all already prayed and given him thanks. And if there's no questions, and there's not really much of a reason to to uh, to stick around. So let's uh, let's give the phone number one more time here nine one five seven seven nine zero zero one six and um we'll uh we'll go to another break here and and uh, see if we've got some phone calls coming in and then when we come back we'll see whether or not we're needed today kenny so let's go to another break This is John MacArthur with more Portraits of Grace. What do you think about when you ponder the possibility of trials in your future? Are you fearful or do you actually look forward to them? Well, it's easy to react with fear and disappointment when you aren't prepared for the possibility of difficulties. But Proverbs 29.25 offers an antidote. It says, The fear of man brings a snare, but he who trusts in the Lord will be exalted or lifted up. You see, Jesus says that if the Father cares for small birds and numbers each of the hairs on your head, He is certainly concerned about your physical and spiritual well-being. No matter how bad your trial may seem, God will sustain you. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. How can any of you who profess Jesus Christ let fear control you? So don't let it be a portrait of sustaining grace instead. In many countries around the world, medical care is scarce. Countless millions have no access to safe surgery. Mercy Ships is there to help. Mercy Ships provides free surgeries for the thousands of those who are waiting for surgery at each port. Mercy Ships is bringing services to countries that would otherwise never be able to access those services. Find out how you can help by visiting our website at mercyships.org. That's mercyships.org. Every day, we go about our lives driven by routine, our vision clouded by the very normalcy we take for granted. Countless victims of human trafficking walk among us, invisible. 
it's time to open our eyes. The Blue Campaign provides a unified voice for those who combat human trafficking, whether it's forced labor, domestic servitude, or the sex trade. Learn what you can do to help by visiting dhs.gov slash blue campaign. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Bear with me for just a moment. Let me ask a quick question. Kenny, is that a call that you're processing to put through? Let's give Kenny a moment here to see what we're doing here. Um, If we've got a phone call that we can go to. And we do. Let's go to our telephones. Good afternoon, Minerva, and welcome once again to Prayer and Answers. Hi, Randy. How are you guys? Oh, I'm doing great. What's up? I have a prayer request. Okay. I have a co-worker. He's in his 40s, and him and his, um, well, I guess fiancé, girlfriend, fiancé, uh, they're expecting their first baby, and they just got news that um, the baby's smaller uh, than it needs to be, so they're going to see a specialist, and so I am just pr- want to pray uh, that the baby is, you know, God's will, yes, and I hope that his will is that that baby's born healthy and whole. Hmm. Now, you said that fiancé, but they're already having a baby? Yeah, it's. I, I think they're going to end up getting married. He, it, that's his intention. They're right now they're just boyfriend-girlfriend. But, well, uh, if but, they're just boyfriend-girlfriend, why are they getting ready to have a baby? No, she's already pregnant. With, um, so well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't an immaculate conception. So Exactly. <laughs> um, so... And and are they asking God for help with the baby, or is it just that you're concerned for the baby? It's just that I'm concerned. Yeah. I don't get to talk to him much, uh, but he knows that I'm a Christian, and he knows that I, you know, I don't really think he's a believer. He's one of those that he said, you know, he wants to sow his wild oats, and when, you know, before he dies, he'll accept him. And I said, I told him, I said, you know, our days are not guaranteed. We could die before we get home tonight, you yeah. know, on the way to anywhere. Okay, so, yeah, thanks, Minerva, and I understand now. Now, what I'm getting ready to do is really going to shock some people. Uh, Those who know me know that you don't want to ask me to pray for somebody who's outside of the will of God. It's not a pretty prayer, but I'm going to because you've asked, okay? So, and when I get done, people may be going, what kind of a horrible man is that? Well... (laughs) <laughs> They're welcome to per- to call in and ask me that personally, but here we go. Father, first of all, I wanted to apologize to you. Uh, here we have a man and a woman who are giving no consideration whatsoever that they are breathing your air and living on your planet. They are living their lives willfully and completely outside of any consideration of who you are and your justice and your mercy. They have no fear of you whatsoever. And so they are living in sin. Sin. Now, Lord, I know that you love them and you have died on the cross for them. I understand that. And I know that if something doesn't change, that they will spend eternity in hell and that that's not what you desire. So first, (laughs) not only do I apologize for their outright rebellion against you, even this thought of sowing wild oats. What an unbelievably disrespectful thing for this man to do. I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you will bring tragedy and destruction into their life if that's what's needed to get their attention. If, Father, you can get their attention through Minerva, if you can touch her and your Holy Spirit fills her, and she is able to bring your gospel and to tell them of the danger that they're in, then I pray, Lord, that that they could come to you the easy way. But if not, God, then I pray that you will bring whatever tragedy is necessary, even when it comes to this child. Father, I pray that as as they look at the situation of this baby not developing properly, Lord, please, would you have them turn their thoughts to you and maybe they could ask for prayer. Maybe they could could come to you and repent and give their lives to you as they should. And so, Father, I'm going to pray. I know that this baby's soul is in a safe place with you. I can't pray that you heal the baby, Lord. I pray that you will use this to heal the parents 
and bring them to a right relationship with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, Brandy, you know, you said a lot in that prayer that's very true. Very, very true. Um, and uh, thank you for that honesty because we need it. Uh, I was one of the, I was the caller um, that called um, a couple of months ago, didn't give my name. I'm sure Kenny knows because it's me. He knows my number uh, that called about my son being in prison and asked for prayer. Uh, and I pray that it is his will. And I know I've heard people say that they ask for God to bring their loved one. And sometimes people don't understand that um, God's ways are not our ways. And sometimes it takes something as drastic as that to bring them. Yeah, so, him. yeah we're not accustomed to thinking of things in, in reality. Um, exactly. I remember, and it, it hurts me to say some of the things that I say. I remember years ago, a grandmother uh, was praying for her grandson because she was afraid that her grandson might be going into prison. And I asked the grandmother, who's a beautiful believer in the Lord, if, if the place where your grandson could hear the gospel and receive Christ is in prison, is it okay for God to take him there? And that's a, that was a hurtful question. Do you see the angst yeah. that it causes? And I'm going yeah. to tell you something. Uh, that grandson came to the Lord. And uh, wow. and so so um, your co-worker, now Minerva, you're God's vessel in that workplace right now. Yeah. And... Um, He's talking about sowing his wild oats. Does he know what hell is and how long it lasts? And so I'll be praying for you that you'll be able to not just be the Christian in the workplace, but that also you'll be the preacher. Amen. And be able yes. to, to just, you now you may get fired or beat up or whatever, but that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. it is, time is short. And eternity exactly. is at stake, okay? Exactly. Thank you so much, Pastor Randy. All right. Do you have anybody else with you? I caught on at the very uh, no, there's, uh, few no, it's just it's just me here today. And one of the things that, that I do when it when it is just me is if uh -huh. if you know, if folks don't have need for prayer or questions, I just usually end the show a little bit early. If all of our needs okay. are met and stuff, there's not a sense to just sit here and use our <laughs> oxygen and, you know, fill the airway. So um, well, let me tell you but so thank really you quick. for calling in. You're welcome. Let me tell you something really quick. Last week, if I was somebody who wanted to get my feelings hurt, I'd get my feelings hurt. Because what I noticed was last week, after I told that joke, mm -hmm. it was like people were scared. I was going to call back and tell another ugly joke. And <laughs> yes. you had so many calls. We and did. I thought, oh, yeah. yeah. Was it because I told a bad joke? Because I can tell another bad joke. Is that just that <laughs> no, no, ringing? no. I, you know, <laughs> something else, too, that happened that was just so beautiful. Somebody who listened last week. At um, church, I saw her. Yeah, showed up, uh, came to church, and the Lord, the Lord the Lord had uh, used that to answer her prayer. She had been looking for a church. So you just and never know what God's going to do with the program at any given time. You're a blessing, Pastor. You're well, a blessing you. to us. Thank you. God bless you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So let me give the uh, phone numbers again. It's area code 915-779-0016. And um, I'm hoping that you'll also pray uh, for these folks that uh, are are living in sin and don't recognize the danger that they're in, nor do they have any thought uh, to their creator and their God. Will you be praying that the Lord will save them uh, because they are in terrible danger? And uh, so I want to ask you if you'll keep this couple in uh, in prayer. Uh, we'll take another break and see how we do when we come back from this break. 915-779-0016. Um, and uh, we want your prayer requests or if you have a question or just anything you want to talk about to help lift the, 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 the name of God up, I really would could use the help. We'll be back in a moment with more prayer and answers. Don Stevens here at MercyShips.org with today's Mercy Minute. Tom Knight volunteered on board our hospital ship serving as fourth engineer, but he had a problem that affected him when he went to sea. He suffered from motion sickness. He worried about how it would affect his service. Then a pastor encouraged him. His message to a bunch of missionaries was stop bowing at the idol of your inefficiency. 
deficiencies. If you're telling God you can't do something for him because of something in your life, you're making that an idol and worshiping it, not him. I didn't want seasickness to be an idol between me and God. I was like, all right, I'll do this. In the Bible, Moses struggled with public speaking. Peter had a tendency to speak too much. No matter the struggle, whether physical or spiritual or emotional, God can use you. It starts by saying yes to his call. This is Don Stevens of MercyShips.org. Matt always knew he wanted to be a doctor. That's why he makes the most of every day. To study before breakfast. To work hard to do whatever was necessary to achieve his goal. He found an answer in the military. If you have a passion, a vision for your future in any field, todaysmilitary.com can be your path to a fulfilling career. You have a calling, we have an answer. Find your way at todaysmilitary.com. We all have the ability to touch the lives of those around us. To someone going through a difficult time, a text, a call, or a visit can mean so much. Reach out to the veterans in your life today. Let them know they're not alone. One simple act can make all the difference. That's the power of one. If you're a veteran in crisis or no one who is, visit VeteransCrisisLine.net for free 24-7 confidential support. And we are back with more prayer and answers. Uh, we don't have any telephone calls um, at this time. I know that it, there's a possibility that um, there may be somebody uh, listening that the Lord has brought you to somehow you've tuned into this radio station maybe by accident. Uh, maybe uh, somebody was just um, in a moment of need and said, you know, I know there's a Christian radio station I used to listen to or whatever. Let me let me switch the dial over there and see what's going on. I, I, it's possible that uh, many times the Holy Spirit will have somebody. He'll just move on somebody and they need to hear something in particular. And so I'm going to share uh, with you folks um, something that happened at a chapel service that I was at this last Thursday with some young people um, and then uh, and and then we may be able to just uh, go home early today but anyway um, there was a group of teenagers gathered around in a chapel service that I was that I was doing and so then uh, the Lord had given me some pretty clear um, instructions of how I was supposed to shepherd these young people into a closer relationship with him and they were like many uh, teenagers many young people not really concerned about God or really in tune really thinking about him very much and um, and so I, I had I had them uh, go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and I just want to share with you the how the Lord spoke to them um, I had him begin to read out loud. I had one of the young men there read out loud, and he read, in the beginning, God, and I stopped him. In the beginning, God. And we began with that. Uh, we call God the uncaused cause. And uh, I asked them if they knew what that meant, if they had ever heard that phrase before, the uncaused cause. And they said they had never heard it. And I, I, I tossed my sunglasses into the, the middle of the room there and said, what caused those sunglasses to be, to arrive there on the carpet? And they said, you caused it. And I said, what caused me? And they immediately said, God. And I said, well, we're, we're jumping ahead here. You're giving me a Sunday school answer. What caused me to be born? And they said, your mother and father. And I said, yes. And what caused my mother and father? Well, their mother and father. And what caused their mother and father? Well, their mother and father. And we went on and on and on until finally, till we get to Adam. And what caused Adam? God. And then I asked this question, and what caused God? And they got it. He is the uncaused cause. He's, he's the only one. He's in a category all of his own. Every, everything else and everyone else, including the angels, are caused by him. But nothing caused him. He has always been, in the beginning, God. And then 
I had him continue to read from there. God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, when you read this, if you spend some time in the whole chapter, what the picture that you get here, the earth was formless and void. Why? The entire planet was covered with water. There was nothing else. Y you've got this sphere hanging in the universe covered in water. No mountains, no valleys, no trees, no nothing. Just it's formless and void, covered with water. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the deep. And after we saw that and we pictured that in our mind, I said, now read the next thing. And the young man said, and God said, and I stopped him. And God said. Here the earth was formless and void with the Spirit of God hovering there. And then God spoke his word and things started happening. He began causing order and form and purpose. By this time, the young people were looking very, very closely at me. And they were leaning forward in their seats. And then I shared this message with them. That's you. Here you are, young teenagers, without form and void. And the Spirit of God is hovering over you right now. And we open the Bible and the Word of God is going to be read and it's going to have creative power. And as I read the Word of God over you, it's going to begin putting order and form and purpose. He's going to create you into something that is beautiful and good. Or not, it's up to you. If the word of God is spoken over you and you receive that word, the seed of God goes into your heart, there is creative power that explodes there and he begins to form you into something. And if you just close your ears and don't take it in, then nothing happens and you go on existing as a formless blob with no purpose, no beauty, just taking up space in the universe. Now, I've got to tell you, it was quite beautiful watching the look on their faces as they were leaning forward and nearly not breathing, waiting for the Word of God to be spoken into their lives. And I told them every Thursday I'll meet with you here and we'll open the Word and let it have its impact upon you. And so uh, uh, I'm going to ask you folks, if you would, to keep them in your prayers. And meanwhile, we've gone 30 minutes, and uh, there's really, we don't have prayer requests, and uh, we don't have any questions. So I'm going to go ahead and shut the show down early. I'm praising God that there's not much need out there. And we'll see you next week with more prayer and answers. Thank you for listening to Prayer and Answers presented each Saturday afternoon at 1.30. Tune in again next week at this same time for Prayer and Answers. Jesus is